what's going on YouTube well pretty soon man we're gonna have Kell Brook versus Earl Spence now Kell Brook is defending his IBF belt the 147 uh, pound uh, welterweight belt you know, he's defending his belt and so you got Earl Spence young guy you know right here you know, trying to uh, <laughs> dethrone Kell Brook right here to the left. So anyway, they had a press conference, man. They had a press conference not too long ago. Um, it was almost like a week ago now. Anyway, they had the press conference and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Kell Brook started, you know, using this term, man, um, referencing this chocolate brownie thing. And so, you know, us here in the you know in, in the states we don't know what that means man you know some guys in the know in the UK they know what, what he's referring to as far as chocolate brownie and stuff like that but uh, you know we don't want we, we don't know what it means man it's it's kind of like corny to us that he's saying it we was like man what the hell is that you know what I'm saying but anyway it it don't sound right you know so um, yeah man it, it doesn't sound right um. I remember someone on uh, YouTube, they had mentioned it, and it was like, you know what, I'm not saying that, man, because it might be on some, you know, some gay stuff, or whatever like that, you know, so I don't know what the hell that means, <laughs> you know, it don't sound right, so anyway, I'm going to get back to that as far as, you know, uh, you know, Kell Brook using that term in the, um, uh, in the presser, you know, they had a press conference or whatever like that, you know, so um, anyway, Moving along from that, man, what what is he referring to, you know, as far as, like, chocolate brownie and stuff like that? Like, chocolate brownie, like, what does that mean, man? And so, what was it? And then, you know, he, he says it a couple of times, man, you know. And um, he also mentioned, not only saying that he's going to hit him with a chocolate brownie, but he can't wait to go in there and, and drink, you know, Earl Spence chocolate brownie. That's what he said, man. That's what he said. Go to iFilm London, check it out. That's what the band said. I, I, I thought it was kind of weird because I thought I was like, okay, are you hitting them? Are you for? Are you, is Chocolate Brown referring to hitting somebody or something? Or now you talking about drinking a chocolate brownie? You know, I'm kind of confused. So, you know, um, I was like, man, this must be something. Uh, let, let me look this up. You know what I'm saying? Because I, you know. Let me look this up. Let me look this up. So, I looked it up, man. And here you have the top definition of Urban Dictionary, right? Chocolate brownie, right? Chocolate fudge brownie, right here. Okay, you can read it yourself. It's kind of graphic, you know. But pretty much, it looks like a, um, you know, a sexual you know, term, man. A sexual reference to a, It's like a sexual act. You know, it's abbreviated as uh, CFB, okay? Now, uh, pretty much the gist of it is uh, a male, you know, man, it's kind of gross, man. It's kind of gross. So, it has to deal with a male scrotum, uh, human feces, uh, seminal fluid, and uh, oral sex. Okay, that's pretty much the gist of it. So you got male scrotum, feces, which is uh, excrement. And if you want like a more of a layman, <laughs> I guess term. If you want a layman term, is poo. Okay. So scrotum meaning uh, one's. Uh, uh, Guess you say, excuse my language, if it's offensive, nutsack or whatever. Okay, it holds your testicles. Okay, all right. And then you have the the feces is the fecal matter, human excrements. Okay, and then someone, I guess, um, seminal fluids is involved and someone congesting it orally. Okay, so it's a sexual act. All right. That's what it is. 
I mean, I mean, unless he explains it as something else, I haven't seen any explanation of what chocolate fudge brownie is. If some of you UK guys can explain that for me, it'd be great. But that's what it is as of right now, and that's probably where he got it from. You know, the uh, LGBT uh, community, because community, that's what type of term it is. And, uh, um, and I think that's probably where he got it from, because, you know, he uses this, uh, the, he references his girlfriend, like his baby's mama, you know. I guess it's his fiance, you know, the, the mother of his, his uh, two children. I think he's got two kids now as partner, which is kind of, I, I, I find that kind of strange that Kell Brook refers to this um, young lady here, this uh, beautiful young lady, as his partner, when that's a, uh, LGBT term, so that's the L, that's what the you know the gay, lesbians, bisexual, and transgender people. And I think I think they got queer now, so it's probably Q on the end of that man that acronym LGBTQ. But that's what they use, you know. what I'm saying usually, you know, I mean, you got a beautiful woman like this, man. You like, man, that's my girl, that's my baby's mama. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's, oh, that's my side check or something like that. Or, you know. you know, uh, But usually, usually you just say, man, that's my girl, me, my girlfriend, my fiance, uh, you know, my better half or something like that. You don't say partner. You know, so. But then again, it's in the UK. So I don't know if they kind of like PC or something like that. I mean, here in America, we're kind of getting there, but we're not there yet. We still say, we don't say partner. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, unless he's. A switch hitter or something like that. Maybe Kell Brooks a switch hitter. I don't know, but I, I wouldn't refer to my girlfriend as partner. I could see, I could see maybe a, a a woman saying that, but I could see a a gay woman saying that. You know, oh my partner. Other than her saying like uh, my girlfriend or boyfriend, because you know girls can get away with that saying that. Oh my boyfriend over here, you know. Oh. Not my boyfriend like that, you know, my boyfriend, friend, friend, you know what I'm saying? Or that's my girlfriend without there being any sexual implications with it. You know, maybe the boyfriend part of the boyfriend, like, you know, you know, maybe a guy would, like, question that. But another, he's talking to another girl. She probably wouldn't even think nothing of it. Probably just another guy friend or something, you know? So, anyway, in saying that, man, I think it's kind of interesting that he had this incident in uh, Spain, man, this island called Tenerife. Let's see if I can get to this. Yeah, Tenerife, man, this is place, this island in Spain, right? Let me, let me bring it up, man. I'll bring it up for you guys, okay? This, so this is it, man. Tenerife. Look at all that. Man, it's a beautiful vacation spot right there. Pan. Nice island. So, but anyway, it turned out this, this island, Tenerife, is a very famous vacation spot. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it turns out to be LGBT friendly. Remember, because that's, that's, what, that's what happened back when it was like 2014 when he got attacked. We had that machete attack late at night. Remember that, guys? Well, turns out this spot is like swinger friendly. Not only swinger friendly, because it got a lot of swinger bar, you know, clubs. That's for like, you know, couples who like to do the, like the wife swapping and stuff like that. But this is also uh, like a... LGBT friendly vacation spot, man. I looked it up because I was like, "One in Tenerife." Yeah, I was like, "Okay, that's what's up, man." I was like, "What's up? Like, what's going on?" Because I read the story about Kell Brook. Remember, he got attacked. I read the story, man. It didn't. It didn't sound right, man. It didn't sound right, and then that's when a lot of people was talking about Kell Brook. You know gay boyfriend was attacking him and stuff like that. I just figured that dude was attacked outside somewhere, but he was attacking this dude's house. Which didn't make much sense. At two at two or three o'clock in the morning. 
And then he had his girlfriend and stuff with him. So he had his girlfriend with him. It didn't make sense, man. But anyway, let's run down the timeline of what happened, man. So anyway, Kel Brook, this young man right here, in Tenerife, like right after, I guess he won the belt, you know, was talking about, um, you know, spending time with his pregnant wife and stuff like that. And here it is at 10.30 at night, right? You know, 10.30 at night, his girlfriend pregnant. She get tired. So, Kel Brook, Kel Brook, this young man right here, sends his girlfriend home, right? So, anyway, he's chilling at this bar, this bar or whatever like that. You know, he's having a few drinks. And it turns out the owner, which turns out to be female, the manager of the bar or whatever like that, the owner-manager, turns out to be female. He, he said his, her... And the partner, again, he's using that term, man. The partner, his, he, he, he said her, her partner, uh, invited him, you know, to some drinks. You know, what I'm saying he said so. We don't know whether this girl was a, uh, you know, this manager was, uh, you know, a lesbian or was she heterosexual because, of what, you know, we don't know what she was into, because he referred to the. Uh, he used gender neutral words, man. He said that female, the partner, and then some other guy. So they he went back to their place and they had a few drinks and stuff like that. He said he wasn't hammered or anything like that. You know? So everybody starts to leave, man. Everybody starts to leave. Let me show you, man. Where he's at? He, you know. Who he had on this, man? Trying to find a part where he says he's like left at like 2 a.m. So, anyway, man, everybody started to leave. Yeah, see, it was like 10 when his girlfriend left. I didn't realize how long this article was, but yeah. So, anyway, it was 2 o'clock, man, 2 o'clock when he left with this dude. He said he wasn't hammering or anything like that, man, but he left with this guy. Right, goes back to his place, and then uh, he said that's when it got weird. You know what I'm saying? He started talking about how like street fighting is better than boxing and all this other stuff, and he said he felt uncomfortable. But anyway, they got this. It's his whole story, man. He was talking. About, it was a small joint too. It was a small joint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was a um, it was a very small. How home, I guess this guy owned, right? And it's funny, man. He, Carol Brook, uh, described the weapon like a machete. He describes the kitchen, the living room. He knows all about, you know, the, uh, you know, he, he, he describes in the detail how, like, everything went down. But yeah, he doesn't remember this guy's name. He doesn't remember the location. You know what I'm saying? He talked about how small the, the apartment was or whatever like that. And how, like, you reach out your hand, you touch in the living room. That's what, how small this place was. You know what I'm saying? So he describes a machete. You know what I'm saying? He says it's an unprovoked attack. So he has enough wherewithal to know it's an unprovoked attack. And dude was just a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, he doesn't remember the guy's name. He doesn't remember where he... Uh, was attacked, you know, all he remembers is say he couldn't feel his leg and that he was running for his life, which is, it was a very traumatic experience, but you think you remember some of that, something like that, you know what I'm saying, I think you remember something like that, but, um, uh, yeah, I was wondering what he's doing there, and his girl waiting for him, man, his girl's pregnant, because the way he describes it, man, he was on his vacation spot, you know, everybody speaks English and stuff like that. So he was, you know, he was traumatized by that, man. I feel for him, you know. It was very sad, you know. But, uh, yeah, man, his girl was waiting for him at the hotel. His girlfriend's pregnant and stuff like that. He's got his little baby daughter with him and stuff like that. You know, what's he doing late at night with some dude, you know. Yeah, so, anyway... I want to point out some other stuff, man. 
you know, this dog right here. Okay, you know, Kell Brooks a boxer, man. Kell Brooks a boxer. He a grown man. At the time of incidents, was 28 years old, 30 now. And look at this dog, man. You know, they say you can tell a lot about a people, a lot about a person's personality via their pets and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You can tell a lot about a person, person's personality via their pet. Um, I don't know too many dudes that would have a dog like this. You know? My uncle has a wife and kids, and he wanted dogs. And he didn't get no dog like this, man. He, he You know, he got some boxers. You know what I'm saying? Like some pits, like some pit bulls. He didn't get no dogs like this. He does he definitely didn't have them laying on the couch or anything like that. Okay? So that's some symbolism right there. And then not only that in this article, man, I could have sworn this article is dailymail.com, man. I could have sworn they said they knew the guy's name who um who committed this you know, violent act on Kell Brook, which isn't right, man. You know, just despite how, you know, Kell Brook, you know, wants to live his life or whatever like that, whatever he was doing out there, you know, you know, he shouldn't be attacked, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, moving along, man, they, 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 they say they're not going to release his name from what I, I remember, man, but anyway. This is like a symbolism, man. This is, this picture's worth a thousand words. So it's like, let, let sleeping dogs lie. You know what I'm saying? Let sleeping dogs lie. Forget about it. Forget about the whole incident. Let sleeping dogs lie. And then what's interesting is this this right here. That's very interesting. Um, I wouldn't have that in my house, but, you know, he, he, you know, Kel Brooks a grown man. You know what I'm saying? Maybe his girlfriend right here put that up. I, I doubt it, cause it don't even look. It, it don't. It, it does look like some some a guy would just throw up on the wall, you know. So I doubt if his girlfriend did that, but maybe she did. Maybe they don't have an interior decorator or nothing like that. But you see this here. We we going on some conspiracy stuff, bro. <laughs> even though this was like like published in September. Halloween's right around the corner. But look, man, skeletons, man. Skeletons in the closet, bro. Skeletons in the closet. What what is Kell Brook hiding, man? What is Kell Brook hiding? Yeah, we're going to some conspiracy stuff right now, man. But this just look at that, man. You got the you got the dog. Doesn't look like a a, a manly dog, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what it meant. He it, it I have to say, man, a, a rock pit shepherd, you know, do you know? I mean, a dude want to protect his home and his family and stuff like that. I mean, they don't, they don't even allow you to have guns, let alone knives in the UK. Uh, from what I heard, you no, know, you know what I'm saying. What well, and they, they let allow you to have a dog. I mean, what, 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 I mean, what do they do? Ban all the manly dogs? Well, look at this dog here. This, is, this dog ain't protecting nobody, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got a wife and like two kids, and you want something to protect your house. You know, you, you probably think you'll see a bat in the corner, and an actual pit or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And the guys in the UK, man, they might have like a soft voice or whatever like that. But they, they, they got some tough guys out there. You know, they ain't no punks out there. You know, and look, and look what these guys, this guy's got skeletons in the closet. Bam. Now, in saying that, man, in saying that, let's go back to this, man. Let's go back to this. Look, bro. I don't know whether, you know, it was intentional or Earl Spence was just, like, working in the spirit or whatever like that, something in the subconscious. But this dude, when, Ke when Kel Brook mentioned Chocolate Brownie, Again, Earl Spence was like, man, you a clown. He's like, you a clown. That's what he said, man. You a clown. Right? He's like, man, you a clown. So, he's like, and I'm going to knock you out. Now, 
what what other clown do you know of that's that that kind of is like on the other team, right? Let me show you, man. This dude, this this clown right here, John Wayne Gacy. Okay, John Wayne Gacy. Okay, this dude right here, it's a famous clown. Kill a lot of people. I'm not saying Kell Brook kills anybody, but I'm just saying it's funny that Earl Spence called Kell Brook a clown, and you got this guy right here who was very famous, man. He was very well known in his community, and he paraded himself as a clown, man. He paraded himself as a clown, and he turned out to be turned out to be gay, man. He killed a lot of young kids, man. It's was, it was kind of messed up. But, um, yeah, let's move along. Let's move along. But, yeah, man, that, that was a little bit like a conspiracy spin on the whole darn thing. But I thought it was kind of interesting, man, that Amir Khan calls him out. Where is that? Amir Khan. Called Kell Brook uh, gay, and then you see here this a uh, YouTuber talks about Kell Brook making fun of uh, Amir Khan. You got that? So, man, it's a lot of rumors out there about Kell Brook, man. There's a lot of rumors out there about Kell Brook, but I think, man, we could be looking at uh, um, Kell Brook could be. It could, you know, it's this, this. I mean, he could be that dude, man. He could be that dude, man. He be, he, he could be uh, what was that uh, um, um, uh, what was that Emmanuel Griffith, or whatever that dude's name was. Yeah, I saw a special on him, man. He he seems like a pretty nice guy, man. He killed the boy in the ring. But other than that, man, I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna end it. You know, just despite how uh, Kilbrook might want to live his life or whatever like that, whatever went down in Tanner Reef, that's that's his business, man. That's his business. That's his life. You know what I'm saying? That's what he want to do with his life. We don't know what the truth is. All we know is that. Kell Brook was attacked viciously. He almost got his career ended. You know, he gave us a story. He said he couldn't remember um, for I don't know how long he been talking about chocolate brownies. Uh, maybe you guys can tell me what he's referring to, because from doing my research, it don't make no sense. Uh, it sounds pretty much uh like a you know uh yeah, you know uh you know gay turn to me and um that's what's being researched online man that's what that's what popped up online man I just typed it in or whatever like that and that's what it's referring to if not if it if it ain't that um it's it's a it's a it's a sexual act you know what I'm saying it's a term Referring to a sexual act, you know what I'm saying. So, I guess I guess you could be heterosexual and do that stuff, but um, yeah, I never heard of nothing like that, man. So, yeah, man, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. You think Earl Spence is gonna bust up this clown, Kell Brook? <laughs> hey, chocolate brownie boy, you think you gonna bust him up? Or oh, it's Kell Brook? gonna prevail you know what I'm saying is he gonna <laughs> you think he's gonna win defend his belt and probably just come out come out with this fine young thing and say thank you to all my fans for supporting me <laughs> alright man I'm gonna end it there I could